escaping through a door, you need mouth-to-mouth -mouth CPR or, you know, the kickstart on the heart. As I'm looking at this, I'm figuring out say, maybe I have seen God. When the doctors come and tell me 15 minutes and start reattaching the drip feed, I realize this is freaky. I'm thinking, if I've just seen God, that means my life has got to change. I thought, wow, where do you start? I mean, where do you start, eh? No, that I'm a write-off. Where do I start to follow God? I lay there realizing that if I've been dead that long, I could be on a machine. I thought, well, I may never even get out of the hospital if I've been dead that long. I thought, God, if you've just given my life back, could you please do another miracle? Could you please heal me and enable me to walk out of this hospital and live a normal life? If not, I'd rather be dead. Please take me back into your presence. I'd rather be dead than on a machine. As I lay there, I felt this warmth and power, almost in the natural like electricity, but I now know it to be the supernatural presence of God. As this power like electricity began to move through me in successive waves, I felt healing move into me, and within three or four hours, I got total movement and feeling back. They moved me to the general ward, and, and the next day I discharged myself from the hospital, walked out under my own steam, completely healed. I believe in the supernatural healing power of God. As I walked out, the fishermen in the village saw me come back into the village and thought I was a ghost come back from the dead to haunt them. They ran. Some picked up stones and called me a spirit. They thought I was a spirit coming back to torment them. I began immediately to see in the supernatural realm. I began to look at people and knew what was going on in their life. I could see what was oppressing them, what was coming against them. And I said, God, why is that? He said, you're seeing people in a new light. He said, don't judge people. He said, I want to heal them, set them free from the oppression of the darkness that's tormented them. I want to see them set free out of darkness and brought into my light. I said, God, what am I? what's going on? I'm not chasing ladies anymore. I don't want to party. I don't want to get drunk or stoned. Every part of me wants to live a pure life. It's a radical change for me. What's happened to me? He said, Ian, you are a reborn Christian. That prayer in that ambulance saved your soul, son. I said, God, what must I do then? He said, read a Bible. I said, well, I don't even know what reborn Christian is. I've never read a Bible. He said, your father's got one. Back in New Zealand, for the first time in my life, I asked my dad for a Bible. He had one stashed away in the closet. I, he pulled it out, gave it to me, and within six weeks, I read the entire scriptures from Genesis to Revelations. As I read it, I began to weep. I thought, you arrogant pig, you have mocked this stuff out from a distance, you have foul-mouthed and cursed God, you have never taken the time to read this book. You fool. As I read, I began to see stuff that I'd seen mentioned in the scriptures. As I began to read, I said, God, what happened to me? He said, Ian, in that ambulance, you prayed a prayer out of Matthew chapter 6. That prayer was called the Lord's Prayer. That prayer prayed from your heart, saved your soul. You asked forgiveness of your sins. I forgave you right there. I said, why do you have to forgive the Chinese and Indian man? He said, Ian, because if you don't forgive others that have sinned against you, that bitterness and anger and hatred and revenge in your heart is like a cancer. It will eat you up. He said, but if you forgive others that have sinned against you, I can then come and heal your broken heart. He said, Matthew 6, 14 and 15, you must forgive others that have sinned against you. He said, on the cross, I mean, I forgave those who crucified my son. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I said, God, what was that thing about lordship? He said, when you gave your will to me, you, you made me lord. When you asked forgiveness, I became your savior. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, Romans chapter 10. He said, that deathbed prayer saved your soul right there in the ambulance. I said, God, then, then what's this? You know, I mean, I seem to leave my body or something. You said, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7, when a man dies, his spirit leaves his body and returns to God. His physical body, God says, is just mere ash and dust. I said, I seem to go through darkness. Where is that mentioned in the Bible? He said, Acts 26, verse 18, Jude chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 2, there is a kingdom of darkness which is ruled by Lucifer, Satan, and he said, but there is a kingdom of light ruled by my son. I said, and why did you take me through the darkness? He said, Ian, I took you through that outer darkness to show you where you should have gone. Had you not prayed in the ambulance and given your life to me, I would have left you in outer darkness until the day of judgment. You'd have been held in chains of darkness until then.
I said, God, that darkness, men were screaming at me. He said, that's right, other men have been judged and are left there until the final the final day of judgment. I said, then why would you take me out? He said, well, you prayed some. I took you through the valley of the shadow of death and deep darkness, Psalm 23. But evil could not touch you because you made me your personal Lord and Shepherd. Just before you died. I said, God, the light, he said, John 1 verse 5, light shines in the darkness and the darkness flees, does not comprehend. He said, those walking in darkness, Luke 1, 79, have seen a great light and God has guided their faith into the paths of peace and righteousness. He said, those walking in darkness have seen a great light. He said, where could you go for my presence? Psalm 139. Even if you descend to the lower regions of the earth, yet shall I pursue you. He said, God often does this with man. He brings men's souls back from the pit that they might be redeemed and that they might be enlightened with the light of life. Job 33, I think it's verse 23 on, 23 to 25. I said, God, a tunnel, where is that mentioned? He said, Matthew 7, 13 and 14, narrow and small is the way that leads into the presence of God. Few find it. Most find the broad way that leads to destruction and what outer darkness. He said, son, I took you along a highway of holiness. I said, God, waves of love, joy, and comfort, and peace. He said, Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of my Holy Spirit is love, peace, and joy. He said, my spirit gives off love. My spirit gives off peace, life, eternal life, resurrection life for those who believe in me. I said, I couldn't see my body. He said, you are a spirit being created in my image. God is a spirit, and we're created in his form. He said, you will not receive your heavenly body until my second coming. He said, then the dead in Christ shall rise, and you shall be with me throughout eternity, and your spirit being will be covered with a new, resurrected, glorified, heavenly body. I said, I moved through the tunnel, and a man was standing there in white light that filled the universe. Who was that? He said, that was my son, Jesus. I said, where is that mentioned? He said, John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus clearly taught he was the light of the world. Those who came to him shall no longer walk in darkness, but have the light of life. He said, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus' face began to shine with radiance like light, and his garments were gleaming white light. He said, there was a picture of what I was going to do for my son when he rose from the dead and was to be glorified. He said, what you saw is my glorified son. I said, the light, he said, Revelations 21 verse 23, the light that surrounds Jesus, the light of the world is so bright that in the new heavens and the new earth, you will not need the light of the sun, the light of the moon, or the light of a lamp, because the radiance and glory that comes off Christ, the lamp of God, shall fill eternity. I said, God, I step through that light. How could I do that? He said, Ian, the veil has been torn and, and into the Holy of Holies. Through the blood of Jesus, through his sacrifice, we have entry in to the holy place to look upon his form and glory, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and be transformed in our inner man from glory to glory. He said, you could look upon his form and glory, but not look upon his face. I said, why? He said, no man looks upon the face of God and lives. I said, if I'd, what if I'd seen his face? He said, you will see that only when you step through and stay in eternity. Revelations 22 verse 4, we shall see him face to face in eternity. I see God, he moved to one side and, and, he, and he stepped aside. He said, my son clearly taught he was the door of life, the door of light, the door to the sheep. John 10 verse 7 and 9. He said, those who came into him shall be saved and go in and out and find green pastures. I said, it was like a door, like a window into eternity. He said, that's right. At the end of the tunnel, there is a door of light, but nothing unclean, nothing of darkness can enter in. Unless I know you, you cannot enter in. He said, it's not just words, it must be the heart. He said, I know the heart of man. Men honor me with their lips, but their heart are far from me. He said, only if you give your heart to me, which is the greatest commandment, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. Until you do that, you cannot be born again. It's done from your heart, from your spirit, not just from your intellect. It's not just an intellectual ascension. It's a heart desire to worship me. I see God, he stepped aside and I saw like a new earth. He said, 2 Peter chapter 3, 10 to 18. God said, I have prepared a new heaven and a new earth for those who love me. 
Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. If it wasn't so, I would not have told you. And I said, I